हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज डॉक्टर ए एस अय्यर आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन द कोर्स फाइनेट एलिमेंट मेथड इन सिविल इंजीनियरिंग आवर टूडेज टॉपिक इज कॉन्वर्जेंस क्राइटेरिया ऑफ डिस्प्लेसमेंट फंक्शन और शेप फंक्शन वी नो दैट इन फाइनेट एलिमेंट मेथड आफ्टर डिस्कटाइजेशन वी आर assuming the polynomial function to represent the approximate displacement variation in the element so to represent this approximate variation of displacement whatever polynomial function which we are using that polynomial function must satisfy few criteria if that polynomial function which is used to represent the variation of displacement satisfy those criteria then only we can use that polynomial function in the analysis so whatever criteria that polynomial function has to satisfy those criteria are called as convergence criteria right so the title of today's article is convergence criteria of displacement function or which is also called as shape function so very first criteria that displacement function is to be satisfy is displacement function must be continuous and compatible within the elements understand again displacement function must be continuous and compatible within the elements right so these two words are very important continuous and compatible what is the meaning of continuous and compatible so one by one we'll discuss the meaning of these two words continuous means what is continuous means continuous means once you divide the structure into number of elements if you select two elements from out of the n number of elements you can say that second element should start by taking one edge common of first element it means between two elements there must be one edge common so you can say that it is continuous for example if you look at if you if you want to discretize one rectangular slab into number of element four number of elements like this so this is element number 1 2 this is element number 3 and element number 4 so if you look at element number 1 and 2 so this edge is common in this element number 1 and 2 similarly this horizontal edge is common between 1 and 3 this horizontal edge is common between 2 and 4 this vertical edge is common in 3 and 4 it means all if you look at all elements between any two element there is minimum one edge is common it means it is a continuous discretization there is there should not be any gap between the two elements right there should not be any discontinuity between the two elements right so that is the meaning of first word continuous so very first convergence criteria or convergence requirement is displacement function must be continuous and compatible within the element so compatible meaning is the compatible means when that structure will deform there should not be any discontinuity between elements it means before deformation if those two elements are continuous even after deformation also there should not be any discontinuity between the two elements it means there should not be any gap between two elements element must not separate or overlap it means when that structure will deform there should not be separation of two elements or there should not be any gap between two elements or even there should not be any overlapping of the elements right and lastly there should not be any sudden change in the slope across the inter element boundaries that is the meaning of compatibility compatible when it when the structure deforms there should not be any discontinuity between the elements 
there should not be any separation of two elements there should not be any sudden change in the slope across the inter element boundaries that is meaning of compatible so we are dealing with only first convergence criteria please understand again the first convergence criteria of displacement function is displacement function must be continuous and compatible within the element and the meaning of continuous and compatible you have to write down below that continuous means second element should start by taking one edge common of first element and compatible means there should not be any discontinuity between the two elements when it when the structure deforms there should not be any separation of two elements there should not be any overlapping of the nodes and there should not be any sudden change in the slope across the inter element boundaries okay now second convergence criteria is must be capable of representing constant strain state within the elements understand the displacement function must be capable of representing constant strain state within the element it means displacement function must be capable of representing constant strain condition it means strain in all element must be constant it should not be varying right so this condition will be achieved by dividing structure into smaller and smaller elements this condition will be achieved by dividing the structure into smaller and smaller elements now how to achieve this condition please understand so we need constant strain condition it means in all elements strain must be same what is strain strain means change in dimension upon original dimension this is strain so if we divide if you take a example of one rectangular slab okay and if you divide this rectangular slab into number of suppose four elements right though the original dimension of these four elements are same but it is not possible that when this structure will deform the deformed size or change in length of every element that is element number 1 2 3 and 4 change in dimension of this four element will be same it is not mandatory it's not necessary that change in this four element change in dimension of this four element will be same so if change in dimension will be different though the original dimensions are same it means strain will not be same in these four elements so that we can say that strain will not be constant in these four elements so what is the next what is the option then there is only one alternate that if you want to make the strain same in all element there is only one possibility that make the strain zero so if strain is zero in all element it means it is a constant strain condition right strain is constant so how to make strain zero see if you assume that this rectangular slab is of size 1 by 1 it may be meter or kilometer or whatever so 1 by 1 unit dimensions if you assume and if you divide it into four elements so size of one element will be 0.5 by 0.5 right 0.5 by 0.5 will be the size of one element now when this structure will deform this size of element will change so what will be the change in dimension if original dimensions are 0.5 we know that change in dimension is actually very small compared to the original dimension so let assume that change in dimension will be 0.005 this is just an assumption 0.005 because it is very small compared to original dimension so change in dimension upon original dimension will be the strain so this will be the strain right so you can calculate this strain now if i'll make the change that if instead of four element if i divide this into again more number of elements like this such that the size of one element will be 0.005 by 005 if this is original size of element now you just imagine if this is original dimensions of element what what will be the change in dimension 
change in dimension will be 0 0.00034 times 0 0.05 and divided by original dimension is 0 0.005 so it means now if numerator is having 4 times 0 so that your answer will be almost equal to 0 4 times 0 even if you divide this again into smaller pieces again if you divide this into smaller pieces the original size of the element is going to reduce and if original dimension is very very small change in dimension is again very very small means almost near to equal to zero and then we can say that we achieve the condition of constant strain right so that's why this last line is very important here how to achieve this condition the displacement function must be capable of representing constant strain state within the element this condition will be achieved by dividing the structure into smaller and smaller elements right this is the second condition third convergence criteria is the displacement function must be capable of representing rigid body displacement the displacement function must be capable of representing rigid body displacement this is third convergence criteria right it means when nodes are given such a displacement under rigid body motion element should not experience any strain which is again similar to second one and hence leads to zero nodal force right what is the meaning of the third third convergence criteria is the displacement function must be capable of representing rigid body displacement which means rigid body means element should not experience any strain should not experience any strain and hence it leads to the zero nodal force right there is uh, nodal force forces at the nodes will be zero right so this condition will be achieved by using one constant term in the polynomial function to ensure this condition so which constant term is that that we'll discuss in the next article so these are the three important convergence criteria of the displacement function or shape function right i will repeat it again very first convergence criteria is displacement function must be continuous and compatible within the element meaning of continuous that second element should start by taking one edge common of first element that is the meaning of continuity what is the meaning of compatible compatible means when the structure will deform there should not be any discontinuity between the elements it means there should not be any gap between the two elements elements should not separate from each other there should not be any overlapping of the nodes and there should not be any sudden change in the slope across the inter element boundaries second convergence criteria is the displacement function must be capable of representing the constant strain condition and this condition will be achieved by dividing the structure into smaller and smaller element and the third is displacement function must be capable of representing a rigid body displacement rigid body means there should not be any strain it means when nodes are given such a displacement under rigid body motion elements should not experience any strain and hence it leads to the zero nodal force okay and when you write down the displacement function if you use the very first term as a constant in the polynomial function this con condition is ensured by using that constant term how to use this constant term that we will discuss in the next article so these are the three important convergence criteria which the displacement function must satisfy if the displacement function satisfy these three criteria then only you can use that displacement function to represent the approximate variation of displacement okay
I hope all of you understand the displacement convergence criteria for the displacement function. In the next article, we'll see the next point related to finite element method in civil engineering. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.